Hey, our nerds, today we are going to learn how to print blue lines and we're also going to talk about creating borders for watercolor or for alcohol marker illustrations. So in other videos, in prior like uh, intro to comic craft videos, I've talked about creating and printing your own non-photo blue lines. So I'm going to have those links down in the description below and I am also going to put them in the card so that you guys can check them out. This isn't intended to be like a full how to print non-photo blue tutorial. It's just kind of touching on that to let you guys know that I do have other resources for that available. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below, but please do check those resources out first before you ask me anything. That way I can better address your questions. Hey art nerds, so today I am printing out the blue lines for that bonus Naomi chapter. And I have a further video where I talk a little bit more in depth about printing blue lines and I know I have blog posts about printing blue lines. So rather than this being kind of a full-fledged explanation of how I print my blue lines onto watercolor paper, I just wanted to quickly show it to you guys. I am printing on Canson Montval watercolor paper. So this is a cellulose-based watercolor paper. And I am printing it using my large format Canon Pro 9000 Mark II. And I'm not using the standard ink. I'm actually intentionally this time using a knockoff ink. And the reason I'm using a knockoff ink rather than the standard ink is the knockoff ink is dye based. The standard ink is pigment based. And with the knockoff ink, I can actually remove most of the blue lines when I stretch my watercolor paper. And I'm using a large format printer like this because it allows me to print my large format pages on watercolor paper, which is a heavier paper. So basically just think of this as a heavier duty printer that's designed for heavier duty jobs. And this is definitely a specialty printer. I've had this printer for six years now. I use it all the time. It was certainly worth the money that I invested. But if you can't see yourself regularly printing out watercolor blue lines or printing out blue lines onto other large format papers, this might not be the best investment for you. And I actually have a blog post where I talk pretty in depth about recommended printers and scanners for comic artists. So that could be a good place to start if you're looking to begin your investment. So this work is probably what really differentiates me from other watercolor artists here on YouTube. Many of them are watercolor illustrators or watercolorists. I am a watercolor comic artist. The main focus of my body of work is watercolor comics. And while I don't show that all the time on that channel, it's just because it is really space restrictive and, um, or rather recording for my channel is really space restrictive and painting watercolor comic pages takes up a lot of space and there just isn't a really good way for me to consistently film that and share that with you guys. I do have a few tutorials on actually painting watercolor comics on this channel and I'll try to paint at least the cover of this chapter for you guys so that you guys can see it. But that's what really makes the difference between me and some of the other YouTubers and that's what um, kind of colors all of my opinions, everything I'm looking for, all of the watercolor papers I review, all of the techniques I talk about, it's all basically in service to my watercolor comics. And you can read chapters one through six of 7-inch Kara at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com and you'll be able to see a huge amount of growth from just years of painting comic pages like that. So what I'm doing right now, it is a pretty time consuming process considering it's just printing. It takes about 20 minutes to print 12 pages. Um, it's not just the fact that the printer is slow, it's just, uh, it's also like it has to be fed one at a time and it has to be babysat. So um, I'll probably be doing this for a little while and then I'll check back in with you guys when I'm ready to start doing borders. Okay guys, so I have finished printing out that bonus chapter. We should have, I believe, 14 total pages. So what I'm going to do now, and they're in reverse order, is I'm just going to reorder them. And then at the bottom of the page, I'm going to write the page number, just like I did with the roughs. Then we're going to start working on borders. And I printed these a little bit larger than I normally would print comic pages. Uh, 
I guess I just forgot my ratio. Um, there should be enough border here for when I stretch them for there to be something for the tape to adhere to. That's the real reason I leave a border like this on my comic pages at all. So you guys can actually see the blue. Um, hopefully all of it will dissolve when I stretch it. Uh, I had it on standard printing rather than fast just because um, the past few times I've been printing fast it's printed so light that I have a lot of trouble seeing it and that's fine for a standalone illustration but for comic pages that gets really tiring. So the materials I use for doing borders are a pencil, a couple of clear rulers, and then pigment based waterproof chisel tip like calligraphy style liners and I have here some Pigma graphics. I have here some Pigma calligraphers and I have a Copic chisel tip and these are in various sizes and I'll talk about these a little bit more. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my border with pencil first and I want to be really careful when lining everything up. So a lot of what I'm going to say to you guys is going to sound like a huge duh at this point, but I think it's important to repeat it just for people who maybe forget or don't think about it. So when we're doing our borders, you can line them up against your printed line, but my borders are just always crooked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up against the hash mark lines and I'll zoom in to show you guys. And this is why having a gridded ruler is really helpful. And it's why I wish my longer 24 inch ruler was gridded because it really makes lining things up a lot easier than if you're using a non gridded marker. So I line the hash marks up with the ends of the page, page and then I also try to line the bottom of the page and make it parallel with one of the grids on the ruler and I'll show you guys with the top as well. Okay, so that was a pretty easy page. It was just a cover. Let's skip ahead and do a page that has borders. And I'm going to do the penciled borders on all my pages first before I do the inks. So this one has a lot going on. What we're gonna do is we're going to start by doing the exterior borders and then move inward and do the interior borders. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do that in time lapse.
Okay, so as you guys saw, I did the exterior borders first, then I did the major page divides, then I worked on the page subdivide. So that leaves us with a page of panels. We do have a panel break here that I'm going to need to take into account when we are inking the borders. So normally I would do all of the panel borders in pencil first and then go back and do inks for all of them. But since I have you guys here, I think it might just be easier if we go ahead and ink our cover and our border page example. So I mentioned earlier that I would talk a little bit more about our pigment based pens. Okay, so these are the pins that I like to use for doing borders and I like using them for a few different reasons. When you use Sakura Pigma or Copic Multiliner, you're getting pigment based pens that are going to be alcohol marker proof and waterproof. So they're really good for doing inking and borders on comics. With the larger calligraphy pens, like the Pigma Graphic pens, you can see that they are chisel shape and they put down a wider line than your average fine liner, which makes it very easy to do borders in one swoop. And what you do is you basically align the wide end of your pen against the border of your ruler. Now with rulers, you have this edge here and then you have this metal edge on many rulers. Not all rulers have this edge, unfortunately, and this is called an inking, um, an inking ledge or an inking edge, and it's designed to prevent the ink from seeping under the ruler. Um, you also wanna have a paper towel handy because it's going to help you clean the ruler in between swipes, which is more important than you would think. So I have here a bunch of graphic threes. I tend to buy them when I see them in bulk because they can be a little bit harder for me to find. And one of them got damaged, so I'm just checking through. You do wanna be careful when you recap it. It's this one, this one got damaged because there's a little ring inside the cap that can catch your nib. In fact, I need to toss this one because even though there's ink in it, it will no longer pull a nice three width. Then we have their size two, which is a little bit smaller, but it still has that distinct chisel. We have their size one, which is a bullet nib. So it's got that rounded tip. I also have a 0.5 and I'm gonna dig up a 0.8 for doing smaller, thinner borders. Then I have a few of the Pigma calligrapher pens. They're very similar. These are actually smaller than the Pigma graphic. I guess they're the same size. They just seem smaller to me when I do a line with them and they're not as sturdily built. So even though these are designed to do types of calligraphy, I really prefer them for doing borders. And then I also have, I had to buy this in Japan, I couldn't find it in the US, a calligraphy in medium. And it seems to be, and now I want a large one because I bet that's a five and I've been looking for a five. Actually, that looks to be even larger than my three. I might say that's a four millimeter. So these are really quite handy for doing borders and I'm just gonna go ahead and demonstrate with the cover. So we're gonna start with the cover illustration and for this, we really only have to do one border and I want to do a thicker border. So I think I'm going to use a two. It is not my thickest, actually. Let me look at it and think about it. Actually, I'll do the three. So this is our inking edge. I'm gonna push this all the way up. I'm gonna line this up just slightly underneath our penciled edge since this is gonna take up more space. And then I'll zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better. Push down fairly hard, line it up with your inking edge and try to pull it in one stroke. You may need to go over it again. I'm not super concerned if it's perfect Line it up again and pull. Then I'm gonna take the paper towel and wipe off my inking edge. And I really think it's important to do that between basically 
every rule, line I rule because it tends to smear all over the paper and then that's much more difficult. So when I'm inking for watercolor comics or I'm inking for Copic marker comics, I don't make any of my inked corrections until the very end. If I can make any corrections at all, sometimes I have to just live with the mistakes. So it's better for me to just be careful the first time I'm doing it and then I don't have to worry about whether or not I can make corrections. And since I'm right-handed, I find it more comfortable for me to pull to my right. So the inking edge makes it much easier, I think. You can tape a couple of pennies to the bottom to give yourself an inking edge to lift your ruler up. You can also tape some cork to it if you want to. Um, that obstructs the clearness of the ruler, so I'm not as keen to do that. Okay, so I've switched to the larger ruler. And I'm actually going to use, I think, the beveled edge for this, which is not, again, not really my preference, but since there isn't an inking edge on this, it's just kind of what we're going to deal with. And you see we get, because we're inking on watercolor paper, we get some irregularities. That's okay, that's why we're going to pull the line again. And I can't talk when I'm pulling like that because I use controlled breathing to help me pull a smoother line. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna zoom in for you guys so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm talking about. So you can see it's about a millimeter below the drawn line. The drawn line is really just a guideline for me. Ah, and the ruler slipped a little bit and that with these longer rulers, that does happen. It's really frustrating, but it's just something you have to deal with. This time, I was kind of lucky because it wasn't super noticeable. So I'm not a particularly strong person. If I'm inking with one hand and I'm holding down with the other, it can definitely act like a pivot point. So you may want to put something grippy on your ruler just to help keep it from slipping. And what I'm showing you guys is applicable for alcohol marker users as well, since these are waterproof and alcohol marker proof. And wipe it down, so. That is the border for the cover. Next, I'm gonna show you how I do borders for a page with interior panels. Okay, so this is a page with borders. We have some considerations to keep in mind before we even start inking. So do we want these two larger tear breaks to break the exterior borders themselves? I do that sometimes. Do we want this one down at the bottom to do that as well? If so, we should ink these before we ink the border. If not, I would recommend inking the border first and then moving inward. So I do actually want these tiers to break the exterior border. It's going to kind of break up the flow of the page a little bit, and it's gonna make the reading order down here hopefully a little bit more apparent without just being glaring. I also want this break here to break that as well. So I guess I'm going to start with this one down at the bottom. And this is where we would use either a 08 or a one to do our inking. So I've got my smaller ruler. I'm gonna use the inking edge again. I'm gonna line it up because I want straight lines. And again, that's when the grid really comes in handy. And holding this perpendicular, that means just straight up and down compared to the paper. And again, I'm gonna wipe it off. do that again. And a lot of comic work is just repetition. Put 
particularly for traditional comic work like what I'm doing. Then I'm going to do these borders up here. Now, sometimes I would find it helpful to pencil this panel in so I get a better idea of where everything's going to be. And I'm debating whether or not I should do that because it would allow me to ink the borders a lot nicer. But what I think I'm actually gonna do this time, because we have other options regarding that, I'm gonna do the base of it first, and then I'll do, um, so I'll do like, kind of a, I'll show you guys, it's easier to show than to explain. Okay, so. Kind of following my pencil guidelines. But as you guys can see, I've left a little bit of a halo around where her hand is and that's to give me space to make some changes to the art because as I mentioned earlier we can't do corrections then after I ink this I can go back tighten up that border or maybe I'll decide that I like how the border is and leave it slightly detached now move down here because I'm trying to decide whether or not I want these to basically be open borders that flow into each other or closed off borders and you can use both to help kind of convey what's going on in the page and to help direct the reader. So these are all things to think about even when you're doing something as simple as borders. I think I will leave them open. excited for this chapter because I've been wanting to do more inked watercolor stuff and this is a good opportunity for me to do that. Seven inch care is just pencil and watercolor. I'm gonna do the same up here. Inked watercolor has a different look, a little bit more graphic look and um, inking your pages like this ahead of time changes the color balance, the black and white balance on the page because you've introduced the black or if you're using a colored line art, even that changes the color balance of the page because you've introduced that additional color. So as you guys can see, I actually made a mistake up here. I closed these borders off. So just for consistency sake, I'm gonna go back and re-ink this bottom one. That's not really what I wanted, but um, you know, I'm pointing it out just so you guys can see how to correct a mistake, even if it does sort of have a detrimental effect on the reading flow. So now this basically closes this tier off from the rest of the flow of the page. So at this point, I'm gonna do the exterior borders just like we did on the cover, and then I'm gonna come in and do the rest of the interior borders.
So I wanted to point out what it looks like when ink starts seeping underneath your ruler. You guys saw me clean it between almost every pass, but because my large ruler doesn't have an inking edge, it was very easy for the capillary action of the paper to soak that extra ink through. It's not a big deal, but I did want you guys to know what it looks like. So now that we've got our exterior borders done, it's time to finish up our interior borders. And I'm going to do most of these with the eight and with the five using the much smaller ruler. Alright guys, so other than doing a little bit of cleanup on some of these panel borders here, which can be done at almost any point, I finished bordering and paneling this page. So that means I showed you guys how to, or one of the ways I print out my blue lines. I have further tutorials on printing your own blue lines and I will have those dispersed in the cards as well as in the description below. This is one of my favorite techniques and it is what makes all of my comic work feasible. So for me, this is a huge help and I'd love to see more people use it because I'd like to see more people do traditional media comics. I just have a bias towards it, I guess. Um, I also showed you guys how to pencil borders and ink port borders on a cover as well as on a page that has interior borders. I did make a few goofs and that's unfortunate. I think what I'd originally had in mind would have turned out a lot better than what resulted, but that is okay. That is just part of being a comic artist. It is better to be finished than it is to be perfect. I will see you guys in my next tutorial where we're going to talk about pencil and inking your comic pages. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you've been enjoying the comic prep and 
process tutorial series and I hope you guys will check out some of my other awesome comic tutorials here on this channel and over at natosoup.blogspot.com. If you like what I do, would you please let me know? I could always use your encouragement because sometimes I feel like I'm screaming into the void. If you would like to take one of my classes with me in person, there's a couple of places where I offer classes. In the Nashville area, I teach through Nashville Community Ed. I also teach through the Plaza Artist Materials, and that is an art supply store here in Nashville. If you're in Louisiana, I teach comic classes like about twice a year through the St. Charles Parish Library System. They are open to all ages, even though it does say T for teen. I'd love to see some older faces in my classes. So please sign up and let them know that you're interested in taking classes with me so they know to continue to invite me. If you'd like to know when I'm in your area, I have a comic class mailing list that you guys can sign up for, and I'll have that link down in the description below. If you've got a few extra bucks every month and you'd like to support what I do, you can join me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup to join the art nerd community. Art nerds get early access to just about everything and they have almost exclusive access to my Nashville making comic class materials. That includes printouts, that includes templates, that includes presentations, that includes handouts, it includes so much good stuff that your average viewer just doesn't have access to. So if you want to help me do what I do, you can join me over there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I will see you guys again really soon. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye guys.